Okay, in this example, I'm going to go over how to use the method of matrix to solve for the system of linear equations. So example four, these two equations are already in standard form. So I was able to go ahead and set up the augmented matrix that, that uh, represent this system of linear equations. So of course, as usual, we line up the coefficients of this first and second equation accordingly. Negative 12, 9, 7, right there. 3, negative 4, 2, and right there. Now, I can approach this matrix in different directions. I can choose to either convert this number or this number to positive 1 first, or this number or this number to 0 first. But in this case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and just convert both of these numbers down to uh, positive 1 first, okay? So if I were to take row number 1, And I multiply it by negative 1 over 12. So hopefully you guys can see that. And for the second row, if I were to take row number 2, and I multiply it by negative 1 over 4, I would get what? Well, for the first row, I would have um, negative 1. Negative 1 over 12 times negative 12, that's going to give me positive 1 negative uh, 1 over 12 times 9 that would be negative 9 over 12 but negative 9 over 12 can be reduced out to negative 3 over 4 well for the last one negative 1 over 12 times 7 is going to be negative 7 over 12 so that's my new first row for the second row negative 1 over 4 times 3 is going to be negative 3 over 4 Negative 1 over 4 times negative 4 is going to be positive 1. Negative 1 over 4 times 2 is going to give me negative 2 over 4. But that can be reduced out to negative 1 over 2. So this is my new matrix. Now, I want to convert either this number or this number down to 0 first. So let's just say I want to convert the top one. So if I were to take, um, if I were to take row number 2... I multiply it by, hmm, let's see, if I want to multiply it by 3 over 4, and then add it to row 1, okay? So that means, as usual, the row that I'm taking to do the multiplication will stay the same, which is row 2. But the row that's being added, which is row 1, will change, okay? So let's see. 3 over 4 times row 2, meaning 3 over 4 multiply every number of row 2. So 3 over 4, 3 over 4 times negative 3 over 4. That's going to be negative 9 over 16. But negative 9 over 16 plus 1, which is what? Well, it's okay to do some handwritten math on the side, you know? Sometimes it's better to do handwritten math on the side than to just try to do everything in your head because it can be very um, stressful that way. So negative 9 over 16 plus 1, which is the same as 1 over 1. So finding the common denominator by multiplying this second fraction by 16 in the denominator and numerator, I would have negative 9 over 16 plus 16 over 16. That would be what? Well, keeping the common denominator 16 and adding the numerators only, negative 9 plus 16 is going to give me positive 7 over 16. So this times this is negative 9 over 16. Add to 1 is going to give me 7 over 16. So this is 7 over 16. What about the second one? Well, the second one is easy. 3 over 4 times 1 is 3 over 4. Add negative 3 over 4, that's going to be 0. 3 over 4 times negative 1 over 2. And then add to negative 7 over 12. Well, let's see that. So 3 uh, over 4 multiply negative 1 over 2. Well, that's going to be negative 3 over 8. Now, with negative 3 over 8... I add it, I uh, add to negative 7 over 12, 
Well, these two fractions have different denominators, so as usual, find the common uh, denominator. Now, I realize that the least common multiple of 8 and 12 is 24. So if I were to, if I were to multiply 8 by 3, which I have to do the same for the numerator, and I multiply 12 by 2, which I have to do the same for the numerator, my two fractions is going to be is going to be uh, negative 9 over 24 plus negative 14 over 24. But hey, keeping the common denominator and just adding um, the numerators, negative 9 plus negative 14 is going to be negative 23. So I got negative 23 over 24. So that means 3 over 4 times negative 1 over 2 is negative 3 over 8. So negative 3 over 8 at negative 7 over 12 is going to give me negative 23 over 24. So that's going to go right there. Okay. So we got 1, 0. Now we just have to convert this back to 1 and this down to 0. So I'm write this. I'm going to write this matrix down here so easy to see. I can go ahead and convert 7 over 16 back to positive 1 by just simply taking row number 1 and just multiply it by the reciprocal of this fraction, which is 16 over 7. So that means what? Well, row 2 is going to stay the same because we're not touching it. But row 1 is going to change. So 16 over 7 multiply row 1, meaning it has to multiply every number of row 1. So 16 over 7 times 7 over 16, obviously, that's positive 1. 16 over 7 times 0, that's 0. 16 over 7 times negative over 23, let's see. 16 over 7 times negative 23 over 24. Well, I realized that 16 and 24 has the largest uh, common multiplicative factors of 8. So 16 divided by 8 is going to be 2. 24 divided by 8 is going to be 3. So 2 times 20, negative 23 is going to be negative 46. 7 times 3 is going to be 21. So negative 46 over 21 um, goes here. Now 1 was done. We just had to convert this negative 3 over 4 down to 0. And I can do that by simply taking row 1, multiply 3 over 4, and I add it to row 2. So as usual, um, row 1 will stay the same because I'm taking row 1 to do the multiplication. But row 2 will change because row 2, row two is being added. So let's see. 3 over 4 times 1 is 3 over 4. Plus negative 3 over 4 is so going to be 0. 3 over 4 times 0. That's 0 plus 1. It's going to be 1. 3 over 4 times negative uh, 46 over 21. And then add negative 1 over 2. So let's see. 3 over 4 times negative 46 over 21 at negative 1 over 2. So, uh, order operation, multiplication first and then division. S comparing three, comparing this fraction and this fraction, I realized that the numerator 3 and the denominator 21 have something in common. 3 is a multiplicative factor of itself and one of the factors of 21. So, 3 divided by 3 is going to be positive 1. 21 divided by 3 is going to be 7. So 1 times negative 46 is going to be negative 46. 4 times 7 is going to be 28. Uh, plus negative 1 over 2. Bring it down. But hey, this fraction can be simplified down a little more. If I were to... Well, 14, does, 14 goes into uh, 28 but not negative 46. 4 goes into 4 goes into 28, but not negative 46. So I can simplify this down to, I can simplify this fraction by dividing 28 by 2, 
28 divided by 2 is going to be 14. And the numerator, negative 46 divided by 2 is going to be negative 23. So that's going to be negative 23 over 14 plus negative 1 over 2. So two different uh, denominators in this case, but comparing the smaller and the larger denominators, I realized that the smaller one is a factor of itself and one of the factors of the larger one. So I can easily convert a smaller one into 14 by simply multiplying it by 7 and have to do the same thing for the numerator. So that means what? That means I'm going to have negative 23 over 14 plus negative 7 over 14. Keeping the common denominator 14 and just adding the numerators, I get negative 23 plus negative 7 is going to be negative 30. But this fraction, if I can be reduced down to negative 15 over, oops, over 7, I mean, because, um, because 14 is the same as 7 times 2, and negative 30 is the same as negative 15 times 2. Cancel out the 2, so that's how I'm left with negative, six, negative 15 over 7, like that. So that means this is going to be negative 15 over 7. So hey, uh, let's just write it down here. 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 46 over 21 negative 15 over 7. So my two equations are now going to be 1 times x plus 0y equal negative 46 over 21. And the second equation will be 0x plus 1y equal negative 15 over 7. So that means x equal negative 46 over 21 and y equal negative 15 over 7. So the solution this system is negative 46 over 21 comma negative 15 over 7 all right so yeah this is how we do this problem you guys and you know just um don't get freaked out when it comes to fraction you know i know that sometimes it can make it almost impossible to avoid tiny mistakes but that's the reason why you have to show all of your work like this